The first three parts of Crisis on Infinite Earths were released a couple weeks ago, and the next two parts are coming out very, very soon. Now, before we get to the end game of the Arrowverse, I wanted to look back on the first three parts of the crossover and maybe establish its biggest flaw. Now, there was a lot of hype for this crossover, more so than I think any crossover previously, or at least in a very, very long time, but it does seem like there are a lot of people who are just generally disappointed. I mean, just looking at IMDb, Part 3 is very highly rated, on par with the very first uh, episode of any crossover, which also has a 9.3, but Part 1 only has an 8.9, which is lower than episodes from Heroes Joined Forces, which all have over a 9, which I really think that's just ridiculous. Part 1 of the crossover is significant significantly better than anything I'm here from Heroes Joined Forces, but then there's part 2, which has a measly 8.1 out of 10, which is by far the lowest rating of any episode of the crossover, only in front of the 8.4 that Elseworlds part 3 had, which, I mean, just looking at these ratings, the average is way lower than previous crossovers, and it just begs the question of what went wrong and why were people disappointed. Well, for me personally, I think the crisis has been legitimately great. Obviously, it's not perfect, but I do think that with, with what they have and with what they're able to do, especially on their budget, they did a very, very good job, and it's on track to be my favorite crossover yet. However, it certainly has its flaws, and I'll acknowledge there are things I would change. In fact, I made a video going over my top five uh, biggest things I would change about the crossover, including things like Laurel having a big role, in fact, her being a paragon, but also the increased screen time of Oliver and Ben. However, the topic of this video was not on that list. One, because I haven't, I didn't think about this uh, this idea or this concept back then. But also, even if I did, it might have not made the list because it's not really about the crossover. It's about something external that that, that deeply affected the audience reception of the crossover event. What I'm talking about is the marketing, and not the posters, I think the posters were great, they look like movie posters, certainly the best crossover posters we've ever gotten, even though they have their flaws, like especially the green arrow not being pr as prominently uh, like in the front or in the middle of the, of the poster as he should be, but there's also the trailers which were really, really great, so I'm not talking about that, that part of the marketing, I'm talking to, I'm talking about the announcements for the crossover, the announcements that we got over the course of the like half a year before the crossover came out, I mean there were a lot of announcements. There was the fact that Brendan Routh is appearing as Superman, reprising his role from Superman Returns. That was the first big one, but it really, really just kept on going from there. There's Tom Welling and Erica Durrance as Clark Kent and Lois Lane, respectively, Cress Williams as Black Lightning, Ashley Scott as the Huntress, and even Brick Bassinger as Stargirl, which is something we haven't even seen yet. There was also Burt Ward and Robert Wool, although they never confirmed who they were playing. Most people did think, and most people believed, it would be their previous DC characters. Of, for Burt Ward, it would be Dick Grayson from the 1966 Batman TV show, and for Robert Wool, it would be Alexander Knox from the 1989 Batman movie. And finally, there was Kevin Conroy as Bruce Wayne. A lot of these castings were huge news. A lot of them were were very hype, or they they generated a lot of excitement for the crossover. But in the end, I think that there was maybe a little bit too much of the announcement, especially with the other things, the leaks that came out from the crossover. On top of these announcements, there was two very, very big leaks that crippled the crossover for its shock value, as well as its surprise value, which I think that the crossover, just with these two leaks without them, the crossover would have been significantly better received with the, just how surprising these were. First of all, there was Tom Ellis as Lucifer Morningstar, which Canada Grass leaked as he saw Tom Ellis in a scene with Matt Ryan, David Ramsey, as well as Catherine, Catherine McNamara. We did see this scene in the crossover, and while Tom Ellis did deny this, he did, he did deny before the crossover came out that he was in the scene, that he was shooting for the crossover. Not a lot of people believed him. People either thought that he would, he signed some sort of agreement or that he was trying to keep it a secret, which he kind of failed to do, which I do kind of think it sucks that Canada Graphs leaked this, but at the same time, what were they expecting? To shoot a film outside where there are a lot of people who would take photos, it's pretty obvious that there would be a leak, especially since I don't understand why they just didn't do this scene in the bar in Lux. They could have just said uh, that they're going to go inside, that's where they meet Lucifer, so that nobody could tell that Lucifer was in the crossover. It's, it's basically like they wanted for this to be a leak, just so that they can generate more buzz about the crossover. So I think even then, it's like partially a, a, an announcement in itself, because it does seem to me like they wanted this to get out. 
But then there's also the Titans, which was leaked by Pagey, as it seems like he got some sort of inside information about the crossover, even though, I mean, the scene that he describes in his videos about this was pretty different from what we got on the crossover. Like, it's similar. They did look up at the sky, and they did see a red sky, but he said they were, they were in the tower, in the Titans Tower, and also that there was a big group shot. It, that wasn't the case. It was just Robin, Jason Todd, as well as Hawk looking up at the sky and seeing the red skies, and the Earth is destroyed. However, he was right about Earth. Earth 9, so I, I guess the inside information was correct, but I, I guess there wasn't really anything they could have done about that leak. For Tom Ellis's cameo, they could have just filmed that indoors, and that's good. For this one, it got out because there was some sort of person who worked on the crossover that knew about it that contacted Pagey or something like that, so while they probably could have done a better job at uh, vetting all this or, or just keeping the secrets for the Titans one, I, I guess there wasn't really anything they could have done. However, because of all the announcement they made, they didn't really give a lot of room for things to be a, a surprise and for things to not leak. As with all these announcements and leaked, we were left with absolutely zero surprises in Crisis on Infinite Earths. Every cameo, which would otherwise be insane, we knew about weeks or even months in advance, which took away the shock value and the awe of these characters from all these other TV shows and even movies appearing, and now those shows and movies are a part of the Arrowverse. There was really no excitement from that. In the actual crossover, it was before the crossover and I think that was a huge mistake. I believe that if we didn't know all of these things, the general surprise of these cameos would have made this crossover basically universally beloved and probably praised as the best crossover ever. Instead, the lack of shock value and surprise, it just made Crisis on Infinite Earths much more divisive than it ever really should have been. I also think that these announcements, not the leaks, this one is only for the announcements, had another negative effect on the reception of the crossover with the expectation, with the exception of Brandon Routh Superman, and to a much lesser extent also Black Lightning and maybe the Earth-99 version or the Kevin Conroy version of Bruce Wayne. All the other announcements were just cameos, including the Birds of Prey cameo, the Smallville cameo, and even Burt Ward and Alexander Knox, they were all just cameos, but I mean, with the announcement of the character's appearance, it just comes with a level of expectation that is bigger than a cameo for that character to have a role. This was especially disappointing for, like, if, uh, I think fans of Smallville, who I'm pretty sure just wanted more out of Tom Welling's Clark Kent. I certainly wanted more out of this version of Clark Kent just to see the three Supermen on screen together, which it doesn't seem like we are. So the level of expectation just didn't work because a lot of people were disappointed as these characters they thought would have a big role were just a cameo. This, again, is not a problem for the leaks because they're just a leaks. So there's nothing to say that they're not going to just be a cameo, but for an, an announcement to just be a cameo, it's very disappointing, especially, I think, for Clark Kent, played by Tom Welling. Well, with all these problems that stem from the announcements, what would I have changed? Well, if it were up to me, and this is also with the benefit of hindsight, so keep that in mind, I think they should have kept all of the cameos a secret, not reveal a single one of them, and also do their best to keep them a secret from getting leaked, or keep them from getting leaked, but also, uh, there's no reason they could not have announced the characters who ended up having large roles, like Superman, Black Lightning, and Bruce Wayne, because the expectation of the characters who only have cameos to have larger roles would be be there, and thus no disappointment, while at the same time, the element of surprise with all of these cameos would be such a crazy thing that it would make Crisis on Infinite Earth so much better received, or it would have, and obviously at this point there's nothing you could have do you could do about this, but looking back, I think this would have made Crisis on Infinite Earths way, way better in terms of the reception. I mean, just imagine watching The Crisis not knowing about any of these cameos, which would be impossible if you're a fan of these shows and you're on the internet for the last half a year, but then out of nowhere, the Titans, Tom Welling's Clark Kent, and Lucifer all appear with even others that would be just insane, and that's evident based off the other shock value and surprising moments that the crossover had that the rest of the crossover really, I think, could have used more of. First, there was the death of Oliver Queen in part one, which we knew was coming, but not that early, which I thought was great shock value on first watch and great emotional value on the second watch and in part three the destruction of the multiverse which nobody expected to the crossover to go that far as in the original crisis the entire multiverse was destroyed except for five universes this one went even further those moments of surprise elevated the crossover so much while the rest which didn't end up being surprising at all really could have been and thus i think the crossover would have been so much better not only from what 
my opinion is, but also just objectively it would have been better. But anyway, that's my take on Crisis on Infinite Earth's greatest mistake. But let me know your thoughts on the matter in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to leave a like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.